Hello, this is Dave from Retired Tire Productions, and I want to welcome you to the Twisted Hobbies Step 1 FPV Plane Build Series. Under 250 grams, Part 2. So let's start working on the wing by putting in the wedge spar. This adds support to the wing and also gives it a little bit of airfoil. As you can see, the wedge spar actually is a wedge, and this bends the wing to add the airfoil I mentioned. So the wedge spar just inserts into the slot in the wing and bends the wing a little bit like this to give it some airfoil. So there's some tabs in the wing we have to cut with an X-Acto blade first. Just clearing the tab material out of the way. Next, flip the wing over and apply masking tape to the bottom. So just putting some masking tape over the crack where the wedge spar is going. Now just put a scrap piece of wood down on the table and Flip the wing back over with the groove on top of that piece of wood. That way it can bend a little bit like this when we put the wing spar in to get that airfoil. Apply some medium CA to both sides of the wedge spar. Insert the wedge spar into the slot in the wing. Got to be quick because there isn't much time. But just make sure it's flush with the top of the wing best you can and against that tape. You can put some pieces of tape over the top if you want to. Like this. This is just frog painter's tape, just one form of masking tape, but you can use whatever you want as long as it's removable afterward. Okay, so you can see that dihedral starting to form there. Okay, so now we'll just let that dry. Just make sure, make sure it's flush with the top of the wing right there. So I use some medium CA for this job and also some kicker. Just pinching the wing together while hitting it with a little bit of kicker here. Like that. I'm not going to do the ends, I just want to make sure the middle is secure. That makes the glue dry fast and then you can let go and let the rest dry. Now you can see that little bit of airfoil that applied to the wing when the wedge was inserted. So the next step is to bring up the winglets like this. Now if you don't have that airfoil in the wing, you'll, you'll see a gap in here. But once that airfoil's in, this should sit fairly close. And after you glue it, it'll keep the airfoil there. Okay, now we're going to apply the medium CA to the winglets on the end here. And basically see what I'm doing. Hope you can see this, but just swirling some CA on it. I'm going to bend it just a little bit and bring this up. Okay, I'm going to spray some kicker on it both sides. There we go, that's one side, that's the other. I'm really holding it tight. So it looks like it's holding now. Just got to use an ample amount of kicker. So here is the bottom here and I see a little bit of crack in the bottom so I'm going to go ahead and put some gap filling. This is the same stuff, medium CA, gap filling, whatever you want to call it. Put that in there. And let me get the lid on because the kicker will... Okay, I'm going to go ahead and bend it. Okay, hit it good, John. That's good. I wanted to make sure I got the bottom. Yeah. You did good. 
All right, now that the glue is dry, let's go ahead and remove the tape. Sorry, frog, we got to get rid of you. All right, flip it over. Get rid of the spar tape. All right, now let's weigh the wing. See how much it weighs. Right on there. Okay, there's the wing. Three, okay, let's see, 34.8 grams. So you can see here that the wing for the step one is a little bit bigger than the Magnum Reloaded wing. Of course, the Magnum Reloaded is from a different company. But, uh, yeah, I think it's going to work real well because the Magnum Reloaded works pretty good and it's got sort of the same wing design. So here's what we've decided. We figured out what flat and level flight would be on this and that's this top edge because that's where the elevator or the horizontal stabilizer is right here. It'll be flat. And so that's flat and level flight right along these lines right here. So what we're going to do is cut out a little compartment right here for the eventual flight controller and the bottom of that will be even with these blue lines for flat and level and then we're going to have a little gap here and once we cut that out we'll go ahead and glue those two pieces together and then of course after that there's another half that goes on top so the plane is three thicknesses of this foam material and this piece goes up here at the top so here you can see the motor, and this is where the ESC is going to go, right near these vents. And then our receiver will go here and probably run one antenna down this way, and one up that way on a 90 degree. And uh, so that's what we got so far. So let's glue these parts of the body. Okay, so we've cut out a little piece of foam here, just use an X-Acto blade. And so that's going to be for the flight controller there, and then the receiver can go down in here. I might cut off that little piece there too. And then we're going to glue it onto the plane right here. I have a carbon fiber rod here that weighs 1.2 grams and I'm thinking of gluing that in the bottom here just to give the tail section a little more support. Okay, just applying glue to the top piece here. This contains the motor mount and other items. And then this, just do this. Holding it here and here to make sure they line up right. Make sure that little peg there lines up. So there it is right there. So I'm going to start applying glue to this part. And then I'll put kicker on this other half and just stick it down on there. Tell you what, this glue is hard to see. I guess we better go ahead and spritz the other part. So you'll hear me spritz, spritzing this side off camera with the kicker. Just spritzing away here. I'm going to try to get it down there close to where it should go. So getting the nose and the tail is the tricky part. That looks about right. Okay, I'm just pressing down both halves to make sure that the two pieces touch and the kicker actually activates the glue. Like I said, I'm going to leave this servo plate right there because I'm going to be moving the servo somewhere else. Okay, next thing is I'm going to put this uh, piece of carbon fiber right along the bottom here just to stiffen the tail up. So I'm going to take the X-Acto knife, make a little slot, and fish that into the slot and glue it in. I've marked the line with two red dots here, and now I'm just going to take an X-Acto blade, and using just a little bit of the tip, I'm going to cut a slight slot for this carbon fiber rod. Very slight slot.
Okay, just pushing the rod into the slot with my fingernail, getting it right in there. And I'll probably run a bead of uh, glue over it afterward. But there it is, that'll greatly stiffen up the tail, which I think is important with an FPV plane if you want it to track true. I've also added a thin piece of carbon fiber rod right here to stiffen up the motor mount a little bit. So now we got that type of situation. Now I know what, this adds a little bit of weight, you know, like a, a gram and a half or something, but I think it's worth it. So the fuse and the wing together right now are 54.5 grams. So this piece here goes on the top of the fuselage to lock in the wing. And I was wondering, See, it goes right there. But how much does it weigh? If I left that off and just glued the wing on, how much weight could I save? So I'll put that there. There's a couple pieces of wood. We have a metal hickey. We have a little washer. And we have the bolt. 4.5, 4.6 grams. So that could save quite a bit of weight. So what do you think? Leave me a comment under the video. Do you think we should leave some of this stuff off to save weight? That's pretty good. I think the flight controller might weigh around 7 grams, so that might make it possible. Part 3 coming next. So here's what we've decided. We looked at the aerodynamics on this thing. Let me start over. Cut.